running out of space on your system disk is something that we all have to deal with eventually. Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today we want to talk about resizing a Linux system disk. So upgrading to a larger disk is a common requirement. And in November of 2022, I presented a similar tutorial entitled Moving a Linux Server to a Larger Drive that was focused on resizing a Linux boot partition that was on Logical Volume Manager. This time, I'm going to focus on a use case where I enlarged my Incas Virtual Machine root partition for Home Assistant. And this technique assumes that your root partition is on a simple partition and not part of a logical volume manager configuration. So my example uses an Incas virtual machine, but this also works on a Linux desktop with a physical drive as well. So first of all, we have the concept of a simple root partition versus an LVN. So we will be resizing a simple root partition for a Linux disk. And as mentioned earlier, if your requirement is to resize an LVM, look at my older video, which I'll link in the show notes. So this is an example of a simple root partition. Here we're looking at um, the structure of the disk on this Home Assistant configuration I have, which just happens to be an Incas virtual machine, although it could just as well be a physical machine. And notice that slash dev slash SDA2 here happens to be the root partition, and it is 94% full. In contrast, you can have a logical volume manager partition, and that's what we're not going to deal with today. But basically, when you look at it, you'll see that the root partition points to something like slash dev, slash mapper, slash Ubuntu, and so on. And that's a logical volume manager partition. The thing that makes it different is that it is basically a disk with a partition inside of it and then a file structure inside of it. People use Logical Volume Manager on servers because it makes expanding to additional disks very easy. So my disk is an Incas virtual machine and here I've done an Incas info on Home Assistant and if we look down in the list, we can see that the root device is currently occupying <clears throat> 72 gigabytes of space. And it's running Debian 12, which is Debian Bookworm. And so that's what we're going to expand. So in the case of an Incas virtual machine, we want to stop the virtual machine and also take a snapshot for safety in case we mess up. And in the case of a physical machine, well, you're going to be moving to another hard drive. And so you're going to have a copy that you're going to be working with anyway. So in the case of the Incas virtual machine, I did an Incas stop home assistant. And then I did an Incas snapshot create for that home assistant container. And I just called my snapshot before drive resize. And a physical Linux desktop will require booting via a live CD or USB as shown in my video that I just did entitled Custom RescueZilla Bootable USB. And presumably what you would do is you would back up a drive using a tool like RescueZilla and then you would restore your drive to your newer, larger hardware. So you can use a live Ubuntu USB as well, and usually those are pretty readily available. Whenever you download an ISO for Ubuntu, that is an installation USB, but it is also a live USB. A lot of times they're referred to as live CDs. 
simply because they are ISO formatted files. So the root partition needs to be not mounted for this operation. And in fact, once you have your new drive and you have restored the data to the new drive, or in the case of the VM, we're gonna operate on that drive actually there, we generally need to not have that partition mounted. The one exception to that rule is actually in Inca's virtual machine. And we'll see that here in just a minute. So there are differences between doing the Incus resize versus a resize for your desktop hard drive. So you can resize an Incus virtual machine disk. And we do that with a command Incus config device override. And in my case, home assistant and my root size will be 150 gigabytes. And presently, my root size is 100 gigabytes, and I'm using the majority of that disk, which is why I want to resize it. So with the desktop, you will have cloned the older, smaller drive to a larger drive using RescueZilla. And you can either use RescueZilla to clone that to an image and then replace the hard drive in your machine and then perform a restore with RescueZilla, or you can simply clone that internal hard drive to another hard drive that might be connected via a USB enclosure. And when you perform that operation, it's important to have been booted from something like a live CD or RescueZilla and the reason for that is because we don't want files open or locked on that system disk that we're trying to back up. So once you have the larger drive in place, whether it's physical or virtual, the partition and the file manager in that partition are still the same size as the old drive. And this is pretty typical of doing a backup just because we move from a one terabyte drive to a two terabyte drive does not mean that that space is immediately accessible. And the reason for that is because the partition structure still represents what we had on the one terabyte drive, even though we are on a two terabyte drive. So you're not gonna see any additional space yet. And that's what we're going to address here. So, you want to start the Incus virtual machine or you want to boot to the new disk in the case of the uh, other machine. And uh, usually it might require that you boot to the live CD instead of actually booting to the new disk in the case of the physical disk. But that's not true all the time. It's just a little bit safer. And so I just start my virtual machine with an Incus Start Home Assistant. Keep in mind, I did that config command to resize the disk. And then I logged into the Incus VM or I logged into the desktop machine. And I here's an example of where I actually logged into that Debian machine. And there I have a prompt. So then you want to view that block-oriented storage. Disk drives are considered to be block-oriented storage. And so we do an LSBLK to list that block-oriented storage. And here you can see that after I resized it, it says that SDA is a 150 gigabyte disk, but SDA1 is only 100 megabytes. That's because it's the EFI boot partition and that won't change. But SDA2, which is the root partition, has not taken advantage of any of that new space. And in fact, it's 99.9 .9 gigabytes. And then I do a DF command, and that simply shows the file systems. And you can see here that slash dev slash SDA2 is mounted as root, and 94% of its disk space is still used despite the fact that I have enlarged the drive for the virtual machine. So then 
our first step is we want to resize the root partition. So I go and I execute uh, parted for the slash dev slash SDA device because that is the device that is holding the root partition. So sudo parted forward slash dev forward slash SDA. I enter my sudo password. It launches parted. And then it says using slash dev slash SDA. And I simply say resize partition two to 100%. And what that means is SDA2, which is where the root partition was, I say resize that partition to and use 100% of the available space on the drive. And it goes ahead and says partition slash dev slash SDA2 is being used. Are you sure you want to continue? And I say yes. Since there really isn't any way to boot an Incus VM, uh, or not boot in Incus VM and access the drive. That's why I'm getting the warning here. However, it's still possible to resize the drive. It's just safer to not have it booted. But since I didn't have that option with the Incus VM, that's what I did here. And when that completes, you simply do a quit to quit out of the parted program. Now, if I do a DF command, you'll notice that slash dev slash SDA2 is still 94% used for the root device. So nothing appears to have changed. And that's because we resized the partition, but we did not resize the file system inside of the partition. So here's the point. It's still not bigger. So we need to fix that. So in order to resize the file system, first of all, I did a DF. Again, 94% filled on the root partition. And then I convoke a program called resize2fs. So I say sudo resize2fs slash dev slash sda2. And what that will do is that will resize that file system inside of the sda2 partition to occupy all of the space in the new expanded partition. Once that command completes and I do a DF command, you'll notice that the partition is only 63% full and not 94% full. And so we have success. If I do an LSBLK again, it points out that we have 150 gigabyte drive but now SDA2 is using 149.9 gigabytes of that space, which is what we want. And if I do a DF-H, and there's a pro tip, the dash H command means give me a human readable result. And basically that will list everything out in megabytes or gigabytes. So slash dev slash SDA2 is now 146 gigabytes in size formatted where 91 gigabytes are used but 55 gigabytes are available. So in summary, we can resize the root partition of an Incus virtual machine or a desktop hard drive after cloning to a larger drive. And this will work to enlarge a Windows C drive on either an Incus Windows VM or a Windows machine where you replaced a drive with a larger one and you cloned it. Although with Windows, there may be a little bit of complication because you might have to move some partitions in order to accomplish what you want to accomplish. But the best part about that is since you clone the drive to another drive, you have a backup in that you're not modifying your original drive. But I have performed this operation on Windows successfully. I just may have had to have used gparted, which is the graphical version of parted, to move the partitions around to accomplish what I want. So the exception to this is that Linux server that I mentioned earlier with a logical volume manager. And you should go look at my discussion.scottabyte.com 
Com Notes server, and there is a article entitled "Moving a Linux Server to a Larger Drive," and that's where we talk about doing the same thing I talked about in this video, except with a logical volume manager layout on your root disk. So to review, the steps are, first of all, use Incas config device override or use RescueZilla to back up your disk for a desktop machine. And then the second step is to boot the Ubuntu Live USB if you're on a desktop or start the Incas VM. And if you're feeling a little bit on the edge, you can go ahead and just boot that desktop and perform the same operations that we did. And since you have that backup drive in terms of the original, uh, you're probably not scared. And in, in case of the Incas machine, we did a snapshot. So again, that provided us a level of protection as well. And then the third step is to simply resize the partition and finally, the last step is to resize the file system that is inside the partition. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel. And don't forget to hit your notification bell. And we'll see you next time.